Hello everyone. Um, today's video, as you can see, today's video is about Rex automation. So in today's video, we'll be doing some Rex automation. Uh, as you might be knowing, if you are in a mainframe projects and you are working as a mainframe application developer, either on Cobol DB2, where you need to work with JCL, at that time, Rex automations or Rex macros are very useful. Video in the today's video, we'll be focusing most. The whole video will be a series where. Uh, we will be addressing one particular problem statement where we need to access multiple JCLs to verify the files that are coded, whether they are catalogued or not, and what are the contents of that file. So let us begin with this video. Uh, today's topic is Rex automation. As you must be knowing, Rex is kind of a scripting language where you can automate your mainframes uh, daily. Uh, daily activities which are repetitive activities can be automated using this uh, Rex macro so for this video the problem statement that we are looking at let's get started with it uh, for this uh, first step that we need to do is, is to retrieve information from the cursor position as you might be aware that just an ISPF screen is just a 24 uh, 24 into 80 uh, size of a screen where each cursor position has its own relative position, right? So based on that, we need to first retrieve the relative information from the cursor position. Then we need to extract the data set name from the cursor information and browse the data set. Third step is to browse the data set. Whatever is extracted and that needs to be browsed. And then if the browser data set shows that there is some data, then it will store that access information. So mostly this video will be a lengthy video. So in the first part, we'll just introduce ourselves with uh, Rex, Rex tools and how do you code Rex and how do you set up your configuration so that you can execute your personal Rex macros. So moving ahead uh, in this, we'll discuss more about creating the Rex macro. Step one is always to code the macro. So in the step one you code your macro and uh, this is the rex code that we are going to code and uh, who is registering the macro so whatever we just created in the step one whatever we have coded that needs to be registered into a certain system executor system procedure libraries from where the rest of the dependencies can be obtained and your rex macro can execute so uh, for registration we need to allocate our Rex macro to the certain allocation library, either if it is a system execute or a system proc. And then in the last step, uh, we execute the macro via the macro name itself. And if there are any arguments being passed, then we pass an argument. In this particular example that we are seeing, we will invoke it where or execute it with the macro name that we define, and the arguments will be a string. So going back to the slide number four, where we will be coding the macros, we'll begin with coding the macro. So let me log into my ZOS screen. Uh, so by the time this screen loads, uh, you can check what is the syntax of a Rex. So any Rex uh, code can be identified and it has has to have a mandatory starting position starting this identifier with the forward slash asterisk and in between it says there is a rex and then closing will be a asterisk and a forward slash again this marks that the compiler or the system behind it knows that all right this is the rex every rex code that i will going to check it so the rex regex compiler then takes over from here and then We'll understand the code better. Let me see if I've logged in. Log in into this screen. Okay. Let's go to the DS utility where uh, you need to create any special library for storing all your macros. I already have a .rex folder here. So here uh, I have already defined this. So let's define it with demo2 to create one demo0 okay so 
here as you as I just discussed we need to tell that this is our X code so you mark an identifier here kind of in a notation and then the next line is to address ISR edit mac, put macro and uh, argument that you need to pass so with this uh, it says okay I am addressing it to an ISR edit where the name of uh, or the type of this rex code will be a kind of a macro will be a macro and this are the arguments that you will be expecting along with the macro so this is kind of a placeholder for your macro name here our macro name will be demo02 okay so with this execution it will capture the argument that you pass and then just as if you have done coding in COBOL you have a display statement similarly in Rex you have a say statement says okay I want to display this message hello the string that I receive from the execution and it's just a simple thing and you stop your code or stop the execution of the code by marking an exit over here this is a simple hello world program equivalent to Rex programming we have defined our Rex. Okay, let us go ahead and execute it in any of the others if you like to. So, as a demo, 02, and display hello YouTube. And I say, okay, it is invalid option. Why is it invalid option? Let's see. Let's go to some other library. Let's say a Google library. not found the reason is not found if you will go back to the slides we discussed that we need to register our macro we need to register the location or the library name where we are going to execute our we are going to store our macros so we need to first run this allocation rex rex, rex code if you might check to know if your library is allocated or not you can run this command tsoisr ddn the tsoisr ddn you can go to any of the system exec or system procedure library and here you can see the number of data sets that are concatenated but we can't see our pds where we have defined our demo to write so for that reason you need to register it for registration purpose i've already created one micro it's just a simple rex tool code where it says okay this i am a rex and then i want to going to allocate this system execute ddn in a share and a reuse mode with this dsn the dsn that we are storing all our records in it will be an exact it will search and says yes so for this we just need to first execute this for execution you just say ex you see there is an RC code of 0 let's go back to this and refresh refresh doesn't work here ok let's see if rest works ok rest work let's see if system exec is running or not over here ok, okay now you can see yes earlier there were some other members which were concatenated so now we have our own library being allocated into this DD, ddn name ok Let's try and say demo 02 what is this this is our macro name and uh, the string or the argument that you want to pass I want to just pass a simple string of I O U T U B E and say hello YouTube have a nice day so thank you for watching this video I hope this uh, three steps were that are understood easily um, Further, we will uh, address this problem statement where we discussed that we need a JCL to be accessed in such a way that by just entering a macro, we can find out whatever the JCL or DSN names that are located or coded in that JCL to know its content or to know the state of that file, whether it is catalogued or not catalogued. So in the next video, we will be discussing about this problem statement. Uh, we have understood the 
three major steps where we code, register, and then execute. Now, the further next video will come up with the proper solution on the problem statement where we will like retrieve, extract, browse, and store the information. So, this much is for this part of the video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, thanks and have a nice day.